Okay, so today we're going to be going over advanced figure selection inside Photoshop. It's going to be a little bit longer of a video than what I typically do, but that's just because we've got quite a few tools to go through. Okay, so one of the main reasons why you might want to have a nice, clean, and advanced selection of a figure, a person, or a subject um, would be so you have a little bit more control over the background. One of the questions and comments that I've received quite a few times now is how I add in a texture to my backgrounds. So for a shot like this, how do I put in the texture? Well, I'm going to show you. In order to do that though, a couple things. Um, I've got everything framed up the way I wanted to. My model's exactly in the frame how I want her to be, but I'm not in love with this distracting background element. Now in order to remove that cleanly, we're going to need to make an advanced selection of her. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go up to our quick selection tool which is in Photoshop in the same panel as the magic wand. So I'm going to get the quick selection tool. I'm going to increase the brush size by hitting the right bracket. And I'm just going to start clicking in this negative space next to my model. And you can see that the selection it's making a pretty rough selection around her. I just hit Q for quick mask mode and anything that's pink has been selected and anything that is not pink is not a part of my selection. So we have a rough selection. The quick selection brush tool does work a lot better when you have a nice clean background like this wall. The, the more texture and detail you have in your background the harder it's going to be to make a good clean selection. So from here I'm going to go to select and in Photoshop CC um, anytime after 2015 it has been changed to select and mask but it used to be called the refine edge tool so if you're using an older version of Photoshop the tool that we're using used to be called refine edge now it is called select and mask same tool. So I'm going to open that. And right now, right off the bat, I adjust my view to be in the overlay mode because anything that is highlighted neon pink is going to be what my selection is. Now let me back up really quick. If you're not seeing that, then over here in Photoshop under the quick mask mode, double click on that and you can set what color you want your selection to be and the color indicates right now I have it set to indicate what is selected. Set it at 40% and these settings will be what the quick mask mode and the select and mask or refine edge tool will use. So I use neon pink because that's a color that's very rarely in any of my shots so anything that shows up as neon pink is very clearly part of my selection and not part of the image itself. So make sure you have your quick mask options adjusted and we're going to go into our select and mask or refine edge tool. So I've got the view set to overlay. I'm going to make sure I have my refine edge brush tool selected within this tool mode and I'm just going to zoom in. And we're looking at our edges. And you can see that it did a pretty decent job of selecting our background area, but it's just not a perfect selection. It's kind of jagged. And so all we're going to do is I'm making my brush a little bigger and I'm going to make it 100% soft. So zero hardness. And we're just going to brush along the edge of the selection. And watch what happens with the selection when I let go of the brush tool. You can see how it had to think a little bit and it cleaned up that edge really well. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see what's going on. Watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and click and start brushing. I'm going to brush this edge and when we let go it will have refined the selection to our wall pixels and deselected pixels relating to our model. So there you go. You can see we have a nice clean selection of our wall. I'm just going to quickly brush through and finish brushing this 
edge between our model and the wall. This doesn't take much time, especially if you have a good beginning, clean, a clean beginning selection. Watch what it does with this hair. This is one of my most absolute favorite features. It recognizes what is wall and what is hair. So, bam. Nice clean selection. It has cleanly deselected the hair. And it is smart enough that it knows that if I start brushing in here, that I want these wall pixels selected and not the hair pixels. Those turned pink because they are now a part of our selection. I'm just going to brush up through and finish making a nice clean selection of our figure. I have noted that it tends to work a lot better when you have a subject set against a lighter backdrop. Now I have shot with darker backdrops, but the darker shade of a backdrop that you use, the more closely it matches tones of your, of your subject. So a dark gray just doesn't work as well as this light gray, which is really just a white wall in a little bit of shadow. But you can see that this select and mask, again, or refine edge tool, it's doing a really great job at finessing that selection between our model and our background. And it's selecting everything that I want and deselecting everything that I don't want. Making this good, clean selection right off the bat is a big part of how I work with my studio shots. I don't do anything with the background until I have this selection done, and sometimes I do this before I do any skin or hair processing. We've got our selection. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and then I save the selection just so I always have it now. All right, so first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this distracting background element. So I'm going to duplicate my layer. I'm going to zoom in over here and I'm gonna use my clone stamp tool. And we're going to select this spot as a source and we're just going to paint out the area as a whole. I'm not even worried about her leg not too worried about this at all. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to select this source and we're going to start painting out this box, whatever it is, this brick textured box thing. I've got to be careful not to paint any other problems in there, but we're just trying to get a nice clean area. Get rid of that texture. Again, I'm not too worried about painting on my model and you will see why very quickly. So I've effectively painted out that box and so we're going to go to our channels, which is where we saved our selection. We're going to hold command or if you're on a Windows, it's Control, and click the channel to make it a selection. And then on what we just the layer that we just cloned, we're going to go to Layer, Mask, Reveal Selection. So very quickly, we have just cleaned up that wall. And we already had her pre-selected, so the only thing that shows up is this area around her. And the only thing that's different is this part that we painted, where we painted out that box. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten that. Now from here, I'm going to pull in a texture. So I have one already loaded and ready to go. So I'm going to drag that into my composition. And I'm just going to center that in my canvas. I'm going to group that. 
and on the group again I'm going to select my channel which is my figure and layer mask reveal selection on the group and so there is our texture showing through around our model and you can see it is showing through even through these pieces of hair we have a nice clean selection so the trick to get this to look good is we're going to actually duplicate this texture layer I'm going to set my bottom layer of the texture to the blend mode multiply and the top layer for the texture to overlay and we're going to set both of these down to 10 percent and we're going to slowly start increasing the opacity of these layers at increments of 10. So with the multiply layer there's 20 percent and there's 30 percent and then with the overlay there's 20 is 30. I'm going to go back to 20. Now overall I'm pretty happy with how that texture has been put into place but I want to modify the background a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and flatten my layers. I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to go to filter, camera raw filter and we're going to take our highlights down by 50 and the exposure down by 0.5 and then again I'm going to select my figure channel as a selection I'm going to apply it as a layer mask to my darker layer and you can see right there we've got a nice darker layer it doesn't look great right now because we've got this fringe going on in the selection but with the alpha channel selected we can go to select select and mask or refine edge tool and change our view to on the layers so anything we do you will see it visible right here in this layer because that is the mask that's being modified I'm gonna to go to feather I'm gonna take my feather up one pixel and I'm gonna shift my edge inward and you can see how that fringe disappears and now I'm going to drop my opacity to about 60%. So I have a nice darker area, but you can see it's not a perfect selection. We've got some problems here. And that's because our selection selected a little bit too much of this model's shoulder. So on our layer, I'm going to go through with my brush and I'm going to paint out, so I'm going to paint with black 50%. Now we're going to paint out this darkener. Oops. We're going to paint out this darkening layer where it's showing up through her shoulder because we don't want that. I'm just going to quickly double check and make sure it's not doing that same thing anywhere else on her. Just check in the skin to make sure we don't have any of those weird blotchy areas that we created because of our mask. Looks like we're good. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that again. And as far as taking the image at this point, the rest of it is just personal preference. One of the things that I like to do is I like to go to the Nick collection. I'm going to go to Color Effects Pro and I'm going to use a dark and lighten center which is a, a vignetting tool. I'm going to place the center right on her face. I'm going to drop my center size to about 15. So really just highlights that face of hers. I'm going to apply the filter which will create us a new layer. So one of the things right off the bat, I love what it did to highlight her face especially how it contrasts against the background but I'm not in love with how much shadow it threw on her body for the lower portion of her. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to select my figure channel again and reveal the selection on that top layer. Layer, mask, reveal selection. And then I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to start by modifying the opacity of both of them at the same time to 10%. So there's 10, there's 20, there's 30, 40, and 50 and I'm pretty happy with that basically what that did is we revealed our vignette layer 
but we masked her out. So she stays nice and light and it only modifies the background. But we have another layer duplicate that affects the entire image. So it allows us to tie the vignette in quite nicely, but leave her a little bit lighter, which stands out against the background a little bit better. Now again, we're gonna check our edges, make sure we don't have any fringing going on. And we're good to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and flatten. I use the advanced figure selection all the time for so many different uses. Once you have that selection, you can use it in any way that you can think of. It's really easy to change the color of the background. So I could use the selection, create a selection, go to layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation. And I can check this to colorize, and I can change the background to whatever I want, and it's a nice, clean selection. It is cleanly selected around her, so I can modify this however I want, and, and really just dial in the image to artistic preference. So I actually kind of like that, so I'm going to keep it. So that's it. Um, I hope this helps. The advanced figure selection, there are many ways to get your base selection. For this one, I started out using the quick selection tool, and then I ended up refining it in the select and mask tool. Now, you could start your selection by using the magic wand and getting a base selection, but when it comes to selecting areas around figures, I have found that the quick selection tool works so much better than the magic wand, which is why that's what I use. Either way, you want to get a base selection first, and then you want to refine it using the select and mask tool. And from there, once it's saved as an alpha channel, you can use it in an unlimited amount of ways. And it just gives you that much more control over your image. Well, folks, I hope that helps. Um, let me know if there's something else you'd like me to cover.